Hey guys, my name is Veronica Gullickson. I am the Parcel Operations Manager here at TransImpact. And today I'm gonna to give a little bit of insight into some of the recent announcements we've seen from the carriers regarding peak surcharges, the holiday season, um, and also I'll touch on our experience with some recent carrier negotiations with both carriers as well. So to start off, um, we'll cover the international piece of the peak surcharges. Um, so as you know, for the last 18 months during the pandemic, we've seen international peak surcharges be implemented by both FedEx and UPS. Um, this week on the 23rd of August, FedEx implemented more peak season surcharges on the international piece. So whereas before we would, you know, kind of expect at this point of the pandemic, we were really hoping to start seeing some easing of the surcharges. But this week, again, August 23rd, they, they increased those surcharges. Not only did they increase them, but some of them increased almost five times as much as what they were previously. And while UPS, we haven't seen an increase from them since the beginning of July, as we know, when one carrier increases, the other one tends to increase their surcharges as well. So I would be on the lookout for an increase from UPS sometime in the coming days. So at this point, FedEx and UPS have both announced their holiday peak season surcharges. So we'll dive into a little bit of what each carrier has announced. In general, both carriers have focused on some of the same things that they've focused on in years past, those ugly packages, so additional handling, surcharge, large package surcharge, uh, and then also the residential shippers are going to see surcharges as well. So not much different from what we've seen in previous years. Um, however, in previous years, we didn't have these surcharges going on for 18 months prior. So these surcharges have been in place since the start of the pandemic. Um, they have continued through. They were increased last year for the 2020 holiday peak season. And where we would normally see those surcharges be cut off in January, they've continued all the way through 2021. And now the announcement's been made for the 2021 holiday peak that they're going to increase again. So one of the things that we saw was when UPS made their announcement for peak season for the holidays, they did have an end date of mid-January for their holiday peak season surcharges. And that really gave us a lot of confidence that we were gonna start to see some of these surcharges start to ease. Um, however, FedEx most recently in the last couple weeks made their peak season announcement. And while the main announcement showed an end date for these peak season surcharges, if you dive into the fine print of that announcement, it actually shows that they plan to keep these surcharges in place even past the holiday peak season. So past January of 2022, they still plan to have these in place. So that kind of came as a surprise to us based on what we had seen from UPS. Um, and it also makes us wonder if UPS is going to try to do the same thing. So to talk about some of each carrier's peak season surcharge increases for the holidays this year, for FedEx, we'll start with FedEx their additional handling surcharge is going to increase over what it was for holiday peak season in 2020 by around 21% for additional handling. That is a huge increase. Um, it's one that we didn't expect to see such a large increase, but given the carrier landscape and how they've been focused on those ugly packages, um, some could say we maybe should have expected that, that much of an increase. Um, also, the FedEx oversized surcharge, that one's going to increase by 19%. So again, they're really focused in on those heavy, bulky packages. UPS, kind of along the same lines, both the additional handling and large package surcharge for UPS are going to increase over 2020 by 20%. So again, they are very focused on those large packages, the heavy packages, the ones that are bulky and it makes sense because the carriers have been struggling for so long, especially during this pandemic with capacity constraints. And these bulky packages are taking up room on the trucks and planes and they're taking up capacity. So it, it makes sense that they are penalizing shippers who are shipping those things that require more capacity. So in addition to the packages that require more capacity, 
Residential shippers are going to be impacted as well. So those shippers that are using the, the postal service as well as ground residential home delivery, they are also going to see peak season surcharges as we've seen in previous years. Um, in the past, we've seen that some shippers are able to negotiate discounts on these peak season surcharges. However, during the pandemic and the 2020 holiday peak season, those discounts were few and far between. We haven't really seen many shippers have success in negotiating those discounts. So what can shippers do to help mitigate these costs and to plan for them? Really, in some cases, as far as the bulky packages go, shippers can try to address their packaging. They can try to have packages that are shipped at weights where they're not going to be hit with that additional handling weight surcharge. Um, residential shippers, there's not much they can do really to avoid it. Um, so in some cases, they have the opportunity to pass along those costs to their end consumers. Another thing that they can do, which doesn't help mitigate the cost, but it at least kind of helps plan for it, is just to budget. These carriers have announced the peak season surcharges pretty early, um, with UPS announcing about a month and a half ago and FedEx just recently announcing the peak season surcharges. They can plan for it. They can budget for it. This way, there aren't any surprises in Q4 when shippers are hit with these large surcharge increases on their packages. The last thing I want to address with the holiday peak season is really related to the capacity constraints. Last year, we saw a lot of our shippers, specifically our large residential shippers, be told by the carriers that they are not going to be able to handle all of their volume for the holiday peak. So we had some shippers that had to diversify their volume and go and ship with UPS and FedEx and the USPS. And that really put a damper on a lot of the plans for peak season. And it wasn't really a plan that they were given much notice for. So this year, of course, shippers are trying to plan for the holiday peak and they are going to the carrier in advance saying, are you going to cap my volume? Am I gonna have constraints this peak season? Now, earlier this summer, we saw specifically FedEx saying to some shippers that no, we're not gonna cap your volume this season. Well. Sure enough, both carriers have kind of backtracked on that and said, actually, we are going to cap your volume. So it's, an, it's a challenge that shippers are going to face again this year. Um, they're going to have to figure out ways to get their volume shipped to their consumers while dealing with these capacity constraints. And that's one thing that seems to be um, a common theme throughout this pandemic is that there's just not as much capacity in the market. In other instances, shippers are being told, no, we are not going to cap your volume this holiday peak. However, they are being told, we're only going to provide you with X amount of trailers this week, or we're only sending, you know, a certain number of packages, which to me, that sounds like a capacity constraint to me, even though the carriers are saying, no, it's not a capacity constraint it basically sounds like it's a capacity constraint. So it's something that our shippers are going to have to deal with again this year. The last topic I want to cover today is the current negotiating environment. So as we know, especially during the pandemic, the negotiating environment has been more challenging than ever. Um, it's something that shouldn't come as a surprise because with the capacity constraints that we've seen, it is harder to negotiate, especially for some of these larger shippers. So shippers who have a lot of residential volume, as well as shippers who are very large, have actually seen some of the carriers telling them flat out they don't want their business. And that's not something we've ever seen before. Equally as important to note is that when shippers are going out to bid, it's really been not only is the incumbent carrier saying that they're not interested in the business anymore or they're going to increase their rates, but the non-incumbent carrier has actually in some instances declined to bid altogether. Um, that's something that we've not seen in the past, but something that we think is 
probably going to continue at least for the foreseeable future. On the other hand, we have seen some successes in recent negotiations, which is a positive. So those small and medium-sized businesses, the ones that ship around $5 million a year or less, have actually seen a lot of success in their recent negotiations. Uh, we think this is due to a couple things. The first being those shippers are large enough that the carriers can still make a profit on that volume. They're still pretty good profit margins. However, they're not so large that they're taking up so much capacity in the network that it's unmanageable for the carrier. So they're really in that sweet spot of being big enough, but not too big. And carriers have really been hungry for that business. So that's one place where, on a positive note, we have seen success in the market as of recently. Um, so in conclusion, right now, the small parcel environment has just become increasingly more difficult to navigate, especially over the last 18 months with the pandemic. Um, at this point, there's really no end in sight for some of these peak season surcharges, as well as the capacity constraints. So some of the things that we should look for in the coming months are any additional information regarding the peak season surcharges and when we expect them to end or not end. Um, and then also coming up, UPS and FedEx both should be announcing their 2022 general rate increase. So we'll be looking to that to kind of give us an indication of where the market is headed and hopefully give us an indication on maybe if these peak season surcharges are going to end or not. And as always, our Parcel Ops team is always happy to answer questions. So please feel free to reach out at any time.